Hey everybody, I'm Troy Sessions. After yesterday's live event that got kind of messed up because of slow uh, internet coverage here in the, in the North Pole where we live, I decided to, to start putting together these little small segments of training for people that are coming up to Alaska and hunting, even in Canada. It, it's a northern, northern, North American, northern country areas that this is going to benefit most. But I just want to go over the two things that I have to have with me out in the field that just, it, it just complements everything that I'm doing up here and I just really enjoy um, being comfortable in camp. And the one thing I cannot live without is a Leatherman. It's a must have. It's got everything from fixing your fishing poles to Allen stocks for your bow, depending on which, how elaborate you get with these. Gerber puts out a really nice leather, Leatherman. Um, and then of course it's got, what's the most important here is it also comes with a knife and you cannot have enough knives. Don't, don't go out there and think you're gonna use your butchering knife on everything else in camp. So have that Leatherman in your, in your pocket. And another thing that I have, if you don't want a Leatherman, make sure you, you have a little folding knife that you have that, that you can use. It's just, when you're putting camp together and you're cutting paracord and putting tarps over your camp and tying up your game bags with full of moose meat, you know, and having an extra smaller knife or a Leatherman is gonna be crucial. I promise you, you will, you'll use it a hundred times out in camp and you'll thank me later for it. So that's a good tip for you. That's, that's the first thing that I can't leave with home without is a Leatherman or a pocket knife. And it doubles as a safety measure in case I get lost. I always have this on me. The next thing is, is get yourself a nice saw. There's a hundred uses for this saw in camp. For cutting this, uh, the stakes for, for your tent, if you don't have enough tent stakes, to cutting that big, nice, beautiful dried log across the, across the river or way where you can't get it out of the, out of the root system. So you cut that off, bring it back to camp, and you got fire for days. It comes in a nice lightweight pouch. It's compactable, it fits in a plane. That's most important for you guys spending that big money to get flown out into these areas. Can't leave home without this. And this one here actually comes with a saw blade on it and it's actually by Gerber. Um, Wyoming saws are really a nice feature to have. This particular one also comes with backup blades. I can even make it smaller and, and trim it down by taking this middle piece out. It's just a nice feature to have and safety Oh, it's just, you can't, don't leave home without either one of these things here. And another thing, there's more to it, but uh, those are the two things that I have on me and with me. Next, obviously, is a nice first aid kit. You're gonna get, you're gonna have a blister, you're gonna cut yourself at some point in time, you might as well have, and be able to take care of yourself and, and not be in pain on a hunt of a lifetime, so. Another thing that I have with me always as a pilot is I have a vest. This one here is just your basic fly fishing vest. And what's so nice about it is I can put survival gear in this vest, throw it on me, fly out to camp, and if I for any reason have to get stranded somewhere or have to bivouac it overnight. I got the essentials with me. It's on me. Now, as a pilot, we all wear these up here in Alaska. I don't, as a hunter coming up and jumping into a commercial uh, air taxi service, you can have a vest if you want, but I basically just fill your own, pot, your own jacket with your own safety gear like flares. Man, you gotta, don't go anywhere in the wilderness without flares. These here, you just open them up, pop them off, and they shoot them, and, and shoot them towards the aircraft, but in front of them so they can see you, or the boat, and you got it, that's just nice to have. Don't go anywhere without flares. Next, I got some real high temperature fire starter. It, you light this up, it gets up to 1500 degrees, it'll light wet wood. That goes in my pocket here. Flares go in my pocket here. Um, and then I have a flashlight lighter, matches, a fusee for the ground. You wouldn't believe how easy it is to, fly, to, to wave somebody down with a, an orange flare. It brightens up the whole valley practically, 
but you won't believe how easy it is to not see somebody that's only a hundred yards in the bushes in the evening time or at dawn they could be waving and yelling maybe 300 yards away and you might not even see them at all and that could be the difference of life or death fusee goes in my other pocket matches go in my upper pocket my flashlight whistle sounds pretty simple but it could save your life if someone can't hear you um, and one more thing that you're gonna kind of laugh about but when you're stranded somewhere maybe for me the plane is, is broken and I'm waiting for somebody which has happened I've landed uh, on a riverbed kicked up a boulder and it slammed into the back end of my tail feathers of the plane broke this rod coming down I was done I was stranded had to wait days to get someone to come in and help me out with new parts for the plane um, so uh, where I'm heading with this is if it's wet outside and you can't get a fire going, hand warmers. You won't believe how to lift your spirits when you're in a situation where you feel like maybe you failed yourself or lost or um, planes broken down. You're, you're waiting for your air taxi service provider to show up and pick you up and they're late because of weather and you just want to warm up. You just want to get out. Get a hand warmer, if not two. I carry them for me. And let's go over one more thing before I let you go. These are just a few tips for now. We're gonna have these probably twice a week, ramping up into uh, September for the moose hunts and stuff going on. Um, question, would you rather have an in-reach or a satellite phone? That's a good question, huh? Well, let me tell you the reasons why I pick one over the other. I've carried a satellite phone for years and it's nice. I've never had it to where I, I didn't get kicked off a dozen times without trying to finish a conversation with somebody. InReach, if you go ahead and buy the InReach, download the app to your phone, you can text like you do every day of your life out here in cell coverage with the InReach. It's that easy. And when you send somebody a text, they get your exact GPS coordinates. As they open up a little map and it shows them precisely where you're at which is where I'm heading next. If it's your favorite honey hole, your best deer hunting spot, or up here, your moose hunting spot, and you text a buddy, better make sure he's not gonna share your information because now your buddy has exact coordinates to where you got your giant bull moose, caribou, bear, or whatever, so be careful with your, with your text, okay? I pick in reach every day. Now, as a pilot, and for you folks that are gonna be coming up here um, and going through a transporter or a commercial service to get you out in the bush, let's say you've got to be, make the LZ zone and you are there and you text your, your, your pilot guy and he says that's, that's the wrong spot or you, it, that you actually bypassed and went further down the river by miles to, to the wrong LZ spot and he can't pick you up where you're at. He can literally look at the GPS coordinates and go look down the river on Google Earth and tell you to go down river another mile to this coordinates or maybe go down two or three more bends and he can land there and pick you up. Could you imagine if you have to pull a raft up river miles to the original LZ zone, if you could even get, if you can even do it possibly? Up here, rivers are wild. We don't have walking trails on the side of them. This is some crazy bush up here. So in reach will save your bacon every time. And with a satellite phone, you could be talking to the president and he can be talking to you and you can tell him you're lost. And guess what? You're still lost. Because if you don't have coordinates, you're lost. Whether you're talking to somebody in civilization or not, they don't know where you're at. They can't triangulate the, the signal. You're lost, but not, you'll never be lost without an inReach or something similar that talks and works the same way as this little device. Anyhow, I'm Troy Sessions here at 60 Inch Club. I hope this was helpful for you. Stay tuned, uh, click like, uh, follow, and you'll get information of our upcoming events like this one right here. Do you know what 60 Inch Club stands for? 60 inch giant bull moose like the one right behind me that I personally filmed. I filmed all of these moose that you've been seeing on this little presentation here. All of them. I've called them all in. It's a great time. So become a 60 inch club member like us here 
with me and Linda, and you too can have the success of this right here behind you, come right into you. 60 Inch Club's where it's at. For um, those of you that want to enter into our live training web, uh, webinar, uh, that's held three times a week. For you, all of you that are following us on Facebook, it's 50% off. Uh, if you go in there and, and subscribe right away, because the offer's not going to last long, it's 50% off. Come in and see the live webinar, see what we're going, what we're doing. And then through that live webinar, we're giving 50% uh, off specials from there to uh, be part of the club members. Um, and enter the vault with, for unlimited access for a year. You heard it from me today. Become a member. Who doesn't want to be a 60-inch club member? I do. And don't forget, we're coming, we have 60-inch club t-shirts too. So be part of the 60-inch club today, guys. See you out there.